Hello, hello. This is Johannes Watery from Hold to Run. Today we will talk about of GDPR consent requirements and we will code the Google SDK to get the consent GDPR consent form from the user. And I will talk about a little how it's going to be the possible death of ad-based freemium applications. So the GDPR privacy uh, data pr privacy requirements is set for the UK and European residents. So we need to request the consent from those residents. So Google SDK will handle it, but the SDK itself sucks because it's gonna require the user to consent, but the user, if he denies everything and all, all or just consents halfway on the critical permissions, Google will block the ads, but still the SDK itself is going to inform you that the user consented. So he might consent at 100% when you get the ads, or he denied everything and you don't get any ads, and all the work of your app goes to vain. Therefore, we will need additional a community-based solution, luckily on the Stack Overflow, we will <clears throat> also code that one into our application and I'll show you an example how you can use that to uh, determine if you should partially limit your application because user did, it, did not fully consent to GDPR requirements or you can make a conclusion to require pro version purchase for instance to release those uh, partial uh, limitations of the app until user fully consents to GDPR and you and Google are able to establish the ad monetization and again for, for the base of your freemium application. So before we start coding let's take a quick look on the uh, official documentations on Google page, what we're dealing with. Let's start. So this is gonna be the key feature and warning and an alarm bell. If you have ads and you're using the AdMob platform, most probably you are as an Android developer, you do have now this GDPR message warning that saying that later this year this will affect all uh, um, AdMob users and all ad related users pretty much. So I'm not gonna go this through fully but you know your AdMob I just linked this page in in the in the video and in the GDPR you have to create your consent form and uh, the GDPR only affects UK and European residents. So pretty much all you need to worry about is the target of the geographics. You just said GDPR, ETA and UK in here. And select your buttons, functions for it. If you want to add these, do not consent and close. And uh, that's pretty much it. Then release. That's it. Okay, the form is ready, but it's not yet shown to the users before we apply the Google's messaging. Let's how do, what do they call it? They call it the UMP SDK these days. So this is another key page for to get the SDK. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this one. Uh, I'll link this into the video and uh, you can come in here. This is going to give you the basics how to run the SDK. So if you're using already Google Ads uh, library, newer than 19.8.0, you will have this implementation in the bundle of that. If, if not, and you want to use this, please then just set up the implementation into your dependencies from here. Now, of course, you need to have your ad IDs set up in the manifest correctly, nothing new in here. And then you can start using these. Let's say you can start building your UMP class to get the user consent. 
So this works right out of the bat, but you just have to implement your own functions in the callbacks of these listeners in here. But I'll code this into a form that it actually works. It's not if you just use it as it is in here, you will end up in the worst case situation where user actually denies his consent is going to be full denial and you lose the ads and this SDK is going to be informing you that user consented and then your freemium app based on ads will not show any ads. So we have to tweak this quite a bit. But okay, I'll link this up to you. And finally, the community based solution. There was there are there is a big hassle right now. I even contacted Google support through AdMob and uh, it's it's fizzling around this topic. So we gotta thank this one guy. I can't find his name now, but uh, he pretty much coded these functions. And this is some complex data set digging up the, the key values, so called TCF strings and uh, making the functions to check if this app user is actually affected, should be affected by the GDPR if you need to react. It's going to dig up all the TCF strings from the shared preferences where Google is storing the SD, UMP SDK is storing the data into TCF strings so we can check if we can show any ads and we can also check if we can show the high value personalized ads. And with these three functions, we can now actually start making our deterministic application if we should limit or request full con reconsent from the user or uh, uh, request the purchase, for instance, pro version to release any limitations of a consequence of partly or non consent. GDPR response from the user. So let's take an example of an app that we have this now running, how we implemented it, and then we code the examples. Okay, here is the example of finalized app, which is fully running the, uh, the GDPR UMP consent SDK, and we have implemented also the community based solution to uh, determine if the user fully consented or if he did not fully consent and our app based on ad monetization is still limited so we are we have to run this now in a limited mode so pretty much this is service based application which is constantly testing back end functions receiving data from the back end as an infinite service so we are now limited into a maximum time span of five minutes and it will auto stop it is not infinite anymore until user either consents fully into this complex gdpr requirements and uh, or he makes the the pro purchase which is gonna be neglect it doesn't matter if you have the pro version we disable the ads and uh, it's not going to require the gdpr related user sensitive user permissions anymore which the google admob pretty much does to run so let's say we would consent instead of purchasing the pro we will get rid of the uh, the gdpr prompt and we get the ads live again so this is either way now this is the ultimate state we want to end up purchase or comply to full GDPR that's it this is going to be a violent approach to all customers but that's where we are that's where the mobile de developers will be at this point we have to do it that's it okay let's start okay let's code the Google UMP SDK GDPR into our game application. This doesn't yet have it. So we need to have the Google Ads GMS Play Services, the latest version 22.2.0. .2 .0. 
Now this has built in the UMP consent SDK. If you don't use this, go into the link that I supplied at the start of the, the video and get that SDK implementation directly to get the UMP SDK. Okay, now we're gonna need to have create a new package. Let's call this GDPR consent. Okay, now in here we need two classes, but at first we will create the Google SDK for the consent. So I call it my GDPR. Okay, it's gonna need to have context. Like so. And uh, it's gonna need to have some support functions. These are standard functions built in into the Android, so I'll be just using them. You need what well, you know what toast is, so this that is what I'm just preparing here. And I'm using. Scope main mm, dispatchers dot main because toes need to be shown in run launched in a in a main thread. Okay, we want to have a tag so we can tag IGD PR like so and what else do we need to have okay logging i'm just gonna take a short shortcut in here so you can use the standard logging so i have my custom logging class in here then we will create the first two ump classes that we will need so we will need to have consent information is user messaging platform now this is the UMP part of the UMP SDK and get consent information with a context okay we'll be using that then we want to create a consent form. Consent form is something we can use as an instance to show the uh, create and show the form. So consent form is this needs to be nullable. Consent form is null because <clears throat> it might exist or might not, and we need to create it if it doesn't yet exist. So Okay, it seems that um, we can code the main functions of the UMP SDK. So first, let's create a function that is we can use to call this SDK from the main activity. So this is going to be public update consent consent info. We need to pass in a couple of attributes from the main activity. There we don't have a view model in this game and uh, we don't yet have consent tracker, but we will need it. So let's create consent tracker class in here. This is going to be the community based uh, um, solution to actually know the true state if user fully consented or not. So let's create consent tracker class in here. It's gonna need to have context also. So we don't need to fill this yet. We just needed it to exist. And by the way, 
while passing in the context pass in the context from the main activity at on create or use the um, app module coin to uh, get the uh, application context without causing memory leaks so let me just check check in here i want to know that um, what did i use in app modules yep also the content tracker will be fetched from the coin i'm just preparing these instances in the coin app modules like so so we can use them through the coin mm -hmm. okay now we can code the first function a second okay so we need to create params is consent request parami parameters okay dot builder and we need to have set consent for underaged I'm using false this app my apps any of them are not meant for underage kids and we can say build so this is for production params there's gonna be a little differences while we are uh, debugging this okay then we need to create a function to request consent info update so we i'm just copy paste this we don't have the function yet but i'm just passing it in here no view model in this app and uh, we should be able to create the function like so okay i'm just preparing this in here now we want to call this pass in the params pass in the activity this is gonna be the uh, the main activity that we call this function once we have the params we call this and uh, we also have init adds a lambda function in here and our consent tracker to know the detailed status okay and we are good to continue to code request consent info update okay now we can request the consent info update we'll be using our consent information class to request consent info update it needs to have activity passed in and uh, it needs to have the parameters passed in and then there's gonna be two callback listener functions for success and an error there's gonna be form error which pretty much we will log so you can use any logging method in here i'm just gonna be using my custom logger to get the update the error in here then we actually will check if the consent is available so I, I take some comments from my previous application and we will say if consent information is consent form available so in the add mob of course if you've created it will be available and if the application user is in in the gdpr area meaning his uk or european resident it will be available <clears throat> and now we need to have a function to let's call it load i take copy paste in here and uh, we make a function called load form we pass in our activity consent tracker and our lambda function to initialize ads so now we have this function in here 
I'm just gonna set it up ready for us like so and we need to uh, make an else if there's no constant form I just say in here to do check from consent tracker to do check status actual status from consent tracker so always when we are in the, in the state of hesitation we want to use the consent tracker consent tracker actually holds the detailed data how user consented and uh, is he in the GDPR or not so I always fall back into uh, <clears throat> the conclusion of the content tracker actually let's take the content tracker now from from here so in here you have all the necessary functions this class doesn't require any fizzling around it works perfectly so thumbs up big thumbs up for this guy so I have that set up I now will because I need to access the, access the constant tracker function so let's open the constant tracker and uh, let's set up this so that we will have everything that we need again I will have some helper classes in here because I'm live logging what is happening inside and then I will take copy paste of those functions in here like so everything is on its place and uh, this copy paste you do, truly let me tell you you don't need to do anything just you need to just call these three functions in here yes I did modify something okay <clears throat> let's take a step back in here and uh, what am I doing in this because I'm using is user consent valid so you can only see in here is GDPR can show ads can show personalized ads and then the uh, comparison functions for those ones so I just simplified it so that I'm combining the status of these functions into one so I can just check through one function so what I'm saying the true false status of is GDPR so I'm requesting the status from here I get true or false I'm checking can can I show personalized ads true or false so I'm running this function and I'm querying can show ads these are non-personalized ads again true false and I'm returning the consent validity based on if it is non, not a GDPR related user let's just return true we don't have to care about it okay there's no GDPR issues else we need to have a permission to show some ads to return true so either cancel personalized ads or cancel ads must be true and again I'm just logging in here and we can take a look when we're done what this actually shows in different situations and I'm returning the consent validity okay so in GDPR let's just say like this that uh, we don't have the function yet in here let me see consent tracker is user consent valid okay this will return true or false so but we don't yet know how to use that true or false okay but it is a to do hmm now let's jump back into our into this GDPR class <clears throat> our request info update function seems ready though not finished that is okay so we need to now continue 
to load the form. Okay, load form is quite complex. So let's create user messaging platform, load consent form, and we need to have those. Let's put input the comments so we know what is happening. And uh, this will need to have a context. This will have a listener function for what is the consent form. Okay. This is returning the consent form from the Google. Uh, what is that? Consent form. Sorry, because we can't referencing our we cannot reference our consent form class here. I'm just making unique tag, and we need to have again form error handling, <clears throat> like so. Let's copy paste the form error in here, like so, and let's again log. The reason of the error if such would happen. Now we need to uh, use the consent form. So I'm just gonna pretty much say add a comment in here and we will address our consent form, return consent form, form into our variable, this one here, no, then we can call this later on and reuse it through a button or some function if we need to. Okay. When consent information, consent status, now we want to compare the status of the consent form. Did the user yet con consent at all or not. So consent information and we have consent status if required. This pretty much means that the user has not responded yet at all. So we have to go through the consent form again to help me understand what is happening. I'm logging that this is required. And now we can say consent form dot show like so. It will need activity. And again, we will be having callback functions. Actually, one. Okay. This will also have a possibility of error. So we say for error again. If from error, sorry guys. is not null. We will again log. We don't do any quick moves, just log the error. And then if we have it obtained, we will actually initialize our ads and uh, finalize that user has consented. Now, consent state status is, is consent information, consent status obtained. We are now checking if it's obtained. Then again, a log logging function and we will again 
use our detailed is user consent valid because it's kind of the funny thing now i told you that google ump sdk will be the destruction of freemium ad-based applications because if user denied all he's he's gonna still be in the status of obtained this doesn't differentiate that by any means and you're you'll be fooled by the google sdk that the user fully consented to all he might as well have denied all still legally he consented that is stupid so <clears throat> we'll be again updating a variable into uh, according to the uh, the detailed true state of consensus and in here we can finally say initialize the ads so if we succeeded anyhow in here user consented half a measure or it doesn't matter we can at least initiate the ads and let the google decide to show the ads or not <clears throat> and the funny thing in here is that the dismissal is actually done by recalling the load form now i gotta say this is quite unlogical but this is actually how it is in the official ump examples now always end your calling of the um, consent form showing of the consent form and reaction ended up by recalling the load form so i believe google has built in method in this sdk that when it is obtained and you reload it it's gonna get hidden instead of shown that's the way it needs to be <clears throat> working so i'm just copy pasting official google here don't don't get distracted and again now we are in required state now we have to say and r when else and we will just in any other state we will just go, again go through our detailed is user consent valid function or not okay we have to continue this class couple more functions i noted a small minor mistake luckily we haven't used them yet we need to uh, make a custom function within this class we don't want to directly call the consent tracker is user consent valid so let's create a function named is consent obtained but we're just gonna be packing this function with is consent user valid of the consent tracker so it needs to pass in consent tracker so in here we're just gonna say obtained so and in here we want to say consent tracker is consent valid and beyond this both needs to be true so now we want to use the google sdk's status obtained so constant information constant status says obtained but that might not be the fact that you can show the ads so the ads might be fully disabled therefore we're just gonna make an end term is user con consent valid from our consent tracker so the consent tracker i showed you compares all these three major terms from the tcs strings and gives us the true valid status if this app can show ads at all <clears throat> okay then we will also check if it's not required okay another one so not required so when do we not do not require this so we can use the constant information constant status if it says not required so at least we can trust in the uh, ump sdk because this not required tells us that it's not it's non-gdpr user so okay let's trust this one 
Google wouldn't lie to us at this, at least. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Then we can say is is obtained. Either one must be. Either one must be true. Where the heck is the or not required? And now we can pretty much log and return this status like so. <clears throat> Again, I'm just logging and then I'm returning the true state if the consent was obtained in a favorable way for the developer. Okay, now let's modify our uh, um, to do's just a bit because we do want to um, change it so this is internal function so we'll be calling is consent obtained and we will pass in the consent tracker that is required inside of that function so these are not yet finished but i'll change i'll prepare them how they will be used in the final version of the app so we had three to do's okay and our most important function is this one hmm now what do we need to code still we have a load form okay the reuse of existing consent form let's do that now we want to create the function to reuse this consent form if it was all already loaded once into this class so there's going to be a button function that if the user hasn't yet co truly consented then we can resolve the form and make a new trial attempt so <clears throat> let's use this one so we call it reuse existing consent form it's going to be a public function because we want to be able to call this from our activity as a button function so it it's pretty much a tweaked version of this function of load form. So let's do this. If consent information is available, again, I will say log. Lots of logging. Don't, for, don't forget to log because that's the only way to understand what is happening constant form and show okay again we must pass in activity and there's gonna be a lambda callback form error like so <clears throat> now we do identical functions as in here while loading so I'm logging that one and uh, yes that's gonna be like so what is it saying move lambda function out of parentheses okay not yet then we will say actually we can copy paste all of this from here as it was in our load form function let's do that so we won't have any errors only thing i'm just gonna do tweak our we don't need to tweak anything okay <clears throat> and why am i getting this error in here let me see activity we need to finish our like so and uh, it wasn't there like so we did our lambda functions were wrong in that step so constant form dot show we pass in activity and uh, 
we are listening the uh, the callback of this and uh, logging again the errors and uh, if it's obtained we will go through our to do check and reinitialize our ads as, through a lambda function and dismiss the load form so that's what is going to happen also in this reuse existing content form of course there has to be else function because this is a user feedback button and uh, we're just gonna say toast and um, user visible user feedback will be displayed saying if this wasn't available consent for not available check internet connection okay cool then again in while using this button okay we're gonna recheck our is consent obtained this function here so there's plenty of a double fallback functions now checking the at the actual state if the google ump sdk does its tricks wrong are we ready to run this application no we have to implement debugging for the update consent info to uh, truly use this because this is going to be the production call update consent info we will be using a debug version of this function so if you're not gdpr currently you can test outside of gdpr and within gdpr area with a debug params let's do that let's finish with the last function so we need to make a debug version of this update consent info so i pretty much just named this update consent info with debug geographics so we pass in both with the activity we don't need to pass in if it's underage or not now we do want to pass in the geographical area outside of not eea or is eea for the gdpr requirements and pretty much the same functions as in the main here okay i added comments with because these are the uh, the uh, geographical settings you can modify these pass them into the geograph and the sdk will react accordingly inside of eea outside of eea or geographic disabled <clears throat> so let's add these they will pretty much there will be a little different setups for params and debug settings i'm just now copy pasting this because we already created the params for the production now we are just gonna say consent request parameters and builder set consent debug settings okay settings are created here and build okay <clears throat> we don't need to pass in the uh, admob app id it should be in the uh, in your manifest already but now the debug settings this is something that uh, we need to create so use consent debug settings builder pass in the context set debug geography so this will make it react on the on the uh, gdpr requirements if inside and not to react if outside okay you need to pass in your test device has id so you can actually get this hast id while running calling this function request consent info which will be run by either ways during debugging in your log cat of the application just search hash and it should bring up your devices hash id and you can copy paste it from there i'm using my 
physical device Galaxy S20 for the testing of this game. If you are using emulator, you shouldn't need to use this. Emulators should work right out of the bat. Okay, so that's it. And then we will call the same function of request consent info update with the new params like so. Pretty much identical, but do not use this in production, only for testing. You have to use this while releasing the app into production. I believe we can now jump into our activity and start implementing our app. Maybe we will create, use our Prev's data store to save the is consent obtained. I highly uh, suggest that if you actually use view model as I do in my other application, this is the correct place to update your view model status, which can trigger any reactions in, in the uh, UI itself based on if you need to show your consent form, if you need to show your GDPR prompt as I did in the, in the demo app. This is the correct place. All the to-dos will make those reactions for you. But as I don't have view model, this is a sim pretty simple app. Uh, I did it quite long ago without it. So I'm just gonna save it into my Prev's data store. Also, you can save it into your uh, shared preferences. So I have two functions, save constant valid, get constant valid. So I'll be using this one. At least I want to save it. So all of these, <coughs> I'll be now saying save consent valid. And uh, now we'll be using the uh, is consent obtained consent tracker. And we will need so and data store. Okay, there will be, um, hmm, I will say scope main dot launch. This is a suspend function, so you need to use some coroutine function, I mean coroutine launch function or uh, um, run blocking, but uh, this is just by saving, so I'm just gonna say scope main. It's not a heavy task. Okay. <clears throat> what else do we have? That is one. We can now start saving all of these in here. Another one. Here also. save. We are always going through through our is consent obtained that we coded in here. This is going to validate the true state of how the user consented 100% or not good enough basically to show the ads. So it's going to save the true false. Now we can dig it up in any place because this is a singleton and uh, any activity can request this state later on. <clears throat> okay, now it's time to uh, start using this GDPR class for our rewarded ad. So let's do that. Okay, we are now in our main starting activity called menu activity. This is the launcher activity of the game. So we will need to in initialize our consent tracker and my GDPR classes in here. And they were in my application, they were coin modules to uh, input the application context through the coin to avoid memory leaks. That's why I will get them through get function. So 
coin is going to take care of the uh, dependency injections for me like so now we have my gdpr and content tracker as global instances for this activity so we will also need to now call the my gdpr classes functions so somehow and to decide whether in debug or in production mode so let's find on create and right after the on create we will create our update gdpr con consent and i want to say boolean great <clears throat> Like so. So uh, let me let me just copy paste because I have it quite neatly in here, and uh, we are calling the functions that we coded, so it's gonna work like so. Pretty much. If in debug we go through our debug function with our test device and uh, geographical settings and uh, we will also pass in a lambda function to initialize the ads if we had a permission from the gdpr else this is gonna be a a production application which goes through the official settings and uh, pretty much saying that it's for underaged or not underaged okay now we used to initialize our ads in the application class we cannot do that anymore because this is blind against the uh, gdpr requirements currently google does not advise for you to do this anymore so we need to pretty much put our ad in here hmm like so yes in it adds yes and let's just copy paste this one in here like so i'm just double checking okay we have a function in here mobile ads initialize this was my function i believe was it <clears throat> No, this is Google Ads. This is the Google AdMob initialization. Great. It is correct. So remember, this won't be initialized if we don't have permission. It's going to be initialized only after the consent. So, and it is a Lambda function like so <clears throat> now we need to call this in our on create when the app starts so let's go into our on create and somewhere in the early in the very early start of the app we are starting to load ads in here we might need to um, we do have to create permits for those ones also let's say to do and to do like so and let's set this into true status because we are debugging great what else do we do hmm
oh yeah we do have to actually initialize the ads also in here so let's create a function let me see so we do need to check the actual state of I'm just going to comment that out and we'll be using the consent tracker and requesting directly from this class if it's truly valid or not. Okay. Sorry, let's go back to main menu activity like so and we'll be also in here saving the consent validity like so so this will be this ensures that even if we don't show the consent form through the my gdpr always when the app starts we get the actual status from the uh, consent tracker and we save it also into our private data store for further use if we need to have a global access okay it, if you have a view model do it in here so that's gonna update your view model at this point view model variable for instance then we have our update gdpr concept consent are we ready with this i'm trying to compare we don't yet have the initialize ads yes so we want to do that one we can actually do it inside here. No, we don't need to. Okay. So we can only initialize the ads while the app starts if we have a permission at this point. So let's copy paste our init ad. Actually, let's create a function. init ads do we have a permission and we just say if if permit init okay so we have to we can't wait for the uh, the consent form always so let's try to init if we have the permit in here based on the consent validity hmm we can also now transfer these load splash load reward uh, reward ads from the on create inside this function because there's no point of loading the ads unless we don't have a permission okay makes sense we used to do that blindly but not anymore so i pretty much have my ads manager class that it has all the uh, add mob functions callbacks in here so i'm just using them transferring them in here also in the on start we do need to know <clears throat> guard load splash add yes so let's 
I believe I can just... If load splash add like so, hmm. Now I'm not loading any add un unless we have a validity. Okay. This is the one that we'll be testing. Start rewarded add. Okay, this is the button function. Yes. Now we can... This is the only add currently that I am using. Now we can... Tangle our MyGDPR in here and check if we do have enough consent permissions, we can start the reward add from a button, else we'll be prompting the user to give us true consent to use this rewarded ad. Else he won't get the rewards or the ads. Anyways, that's our goal for the game. Okay, let's do that. So, now we need to make the trigger function and guard it if we do have the true consent or not. So before we start the app and see how it all works, let's do this. So we'll be using the consent tracker and asking is user consent valid? This holds the real value of it. If we do, we can try to show the ads, start reward ad. This is actually now gonna load the ad. Okay, rewarded ad. Else, now this is something that you need to handle yourself. I don't know, I'm not gonna fully finish this game with a user prompt. I'm just gonna say in here, so a toast text you please consent to GDPR permits to show ads. And what we do in here now is the correct place to uh, reuse the, uh, the consent form to the user at this point, possibly just to make it work. So I'm gonna finalize this later, but this kind of a functionality to check the true state of the validity, load ads, show ads, else prompt to the user somehow that it's not finished at this point, or request a, a purchased version to be used instead. But uh, as this is a rewarded ad, I'm not gonna force the user to by pro version at this point. <clears throat> so let's say my GDPR reuse existing and we had to give the activity is this. We have to uh, pass in consent tracker, consent tracker. We have to pass in the init adds bigger because in it adds sorry this is not in it adds we did we can directly initialize now the adds itself at this point because this is gonna take care internally everything like so, I believe we are now in here. Now, we ha we didn't, did not yet use this reuse of consent form, but now we are. And we are still missing one. Let's, we have a to do, so let's use this in here. Again, 
we are saving into our press data store the true state of it for global access if required or in your case possibly directly updating the view model so okay now we have all of the my gdpr functions in use okay i think it's time to run the app and see how we get the user consent form and how we can reuse it again and again and how the ads are limited so let's run the game now time to uh, test the app we did code quite a lot and uh, let's see if it works and we are now gonna cross compare by logging the big difference of the uh, how the UMP SDK gives us the status feedback and how the true is user consent valid gives us the real feedback so okay as you can see we do now have right on the bat when the um, app is started sorry this is finished but this means pretty much i consent to all i consent to none and then there's about a hundred permission parameters that the user can fizzle with to select consent or not and he's not gonna get it right all of them so that google would be able to display ads so there there's no hope if for ad-based monetization if you don't do this correctly and user presses i do not consent you don't get ads there's either no hope if user intends to go into these hundreds of parameters and uh, he's just randomly gonna tweak these and uh, about 200 230 parameters in here and miss something and no hope that that why this is the end of end of uh, ad monetization so let's go back in here and let's see how our consent tracker did the job so now you can see it's giving us a status of false okay that's this is the function that we can trust at the on create we call is user consent valid <clears throat> we are giving a getting a feedback that the user is belongs to the gdpr area and we have to ask the consent that's why we had the prompt now consent form is shown okay we have no permission to show personalized ads and we have no permission to show any ads at all so okay now i will press i do not consent so we can see how the my gdpr class we can log this class and see how it gives us false info let's say it gives us correct information by saying user consented but it is in big conflict to these so i say i do not consent in here at this point okay so what happened let's see the state of our consent tracker so the true state is we have no permission to show ads at all like you can see here we're still at the gdpr nothing changed but here's the stupid thing i'm sorry i have to now search my gdpr class there's quite a many hmm. oh yes we are fixing that also in here we do get false because we are safeguarding that currently within our app so let's search this function from my gdpr why it works correctly now this one is con consent obtained or not required so okay this why 
because we are using the same constant tracker in here as an AND term. Google advises you to use this like so. And it would give you a true status currently. If you just trust this one as Google is telling you, your app is dead. Your app monetization is dead. So back it up with this so you won't get false status from here. Okay, because that's what you're going to be using to uh, know if your ads are showing or not. So we did not consent. So our ads, rewarded ad should not work either. So let's, let's take a look how we did the function. So we have a somewhere we have a rewarded add button. Let's see. So rewarded add. I believe we have here. Okay. Again, we are checking if the user consent is truly valid or not. And then we launch the ad. Else we should see now a toast. Please consent to all GDPR permits to show ads. And we are going to reload, reshow the consent form. Fingers crossed. Boom. Please consent to all GDPR permits to show ads. Now the user can say agree. Okay, let's say agree. Okay, we pressed agree. Let's log quickly what happened down to the latest my GDPR okay is consent obtained or not required true it is obtained our consent tracker is also now giving us of course the information valid true GDPR true we can show personalized ads and ads true okay this might need the app to restart to actually show the ads because now we just initialized the ads at this very late stage. But hey, fingers crossed. We are trying to reload the ad. It seems it is working. Yes, and we are getting the rewarded ad in here. And probably even we will get this is, by the way, a test ad for a test device, but we should get the 50 gold now and we can start playing the game. Player one earned 50 gold. Super. Okay. Just for the sakes of coolness. Let's play the game. So by the way, if you haven't seen this game, now we have a bunch of bombs. Go check it out in Google Play. This is actually quite old game, but uh, I coded this couple of years back what you need to do is to collect all the diamonds in here and uh, try to conquer the space as you go advance it gets harder and uh, while you're conquering the planets you get more space more freedom to uh, move around and uh, this area of space becomes non-hostile. It's a cool game. I still can't understand how I had the uh, state of mind and, uh, and uh, persistence to code this because it was quite, quite a job anyhow. Check it out at Google Play, I will link it there. It's called Rainfire. But okay, guys, I think we, uh, this was a long tutorial and now you can go 
and set your own GDPR class and uh, make what any kind of a reaction based on the uh, consent tracker and my GDPR as I did in here. Like I said, this is not finished yet. I truly have to make a better prompt than just a toast text for the user. Maybe some persistence, persistent prompt up here that this is non-GDPR compliant. And uh, then the rest is up to you if you want to uh, offer a purchased version for the user because ads are disabled till it's done. We'll be back.